Hello class. I'm going to do a recording for the Math 410 course for the uh, geometry, the section 6.2 perimeter. And uh, just it, there was a little delay at the beginning because sometimes I have trouble with the uh, document camera kind of doing a reflection of the pages. So like right now you can see this correctly, but sometimes for me, it's it shows in a mirror image, like in a reverse image. So I have to kind of turn the machine on and off before I can get it to work correctly. So now it's it's up and running just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and record the 6.2 perimeter in your workbook. OK, um, so this first part on page two, I usually let um, most of the time I let the you, you work on the computer in the learn, you have a learn and a practice and a certify. And I have a teacher solution key. So I have these written kind of in the light wording, but this is things, these are things that you will fill out. So that's why you want to spend at least 50 minutes in the learn and they're going to be going over these blank, um, uh, these blank spaces and these pages. Uh, so you want to spend 50 minutes and you learn doing that. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the actual um, the actual problems and I'm actually going to start first with page seven and then page eight and then I'll go back to page four. So I'm going to start with seven. And the other thing you're going to need is uh, in your 410 workbook, you have this um, uh, geometry page formula. And it, unfortunately, it doesn't have a page number. Uh, so students always say, well, how do I find it? Where is that? And what I remember is that it's, it's located after your uh, strategy uh, for academic su success lessons. So after your academic success lessons, say like these, um, these are usually your decimal lessons, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.11. These are your decimal lessons or study skills lessons is what I call them. But at the, at the end of that, at the end of those lessons, see so managing your time effectively, at the end of that, then that's what I what I remember is that um, is where this geometry sheet is at. Okay, so try to look for that and have that in the safe place. You should you should keep this like all semester long. You should keep this geometry page handy on a paper clip with your multiplication charts because those are these are things you can use like even on the final exam you can use those as a reference. So you want to have those pages close by. And if we look up for the formula for the first one, um, well, first of all, notice that we're finding the perimeter. So I need to tell you what the definition of perimeter is, is and I'm going to define it as perimeter is the distance around an object it uses um, units and uh, the operation of addition. Okay, so the reason I say it, it uses just units, um, sometimes like when you're computing area, area uses units squared. And when you're computing volume, that's units cubed. But perimeter is just plain units. Okay, so you want to make a note of that. And the perimeter for a triangle, look at this triangle. And I want the A for, uh, oh, excuse me, I want the P because we're finding perimeter. Perimeter is A plus B plus C. So I'm going to define it like that. P for perimeter is defined as A plus B plus C. And so I'm going to, when I do my substitutions, I'm going to stack them. And so I'm going to start with, um, I'm going to start with 16. 16 
plus their 13. Oh, excuse me, I should do 60. If I go clockwise, it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter how you set, start setting these up. You just don't want to forget any. But if I go in some kind of like either people go in a clockwise order or they go in a counterclockwise against the clock. So I go in a clockwise order. I have 16 and then 17 and then 13. So if I add these up in a clockwise order, okay, then I add, so seven and three is 10 plus six is 16, carry the one, and then one, two, three, four. So it looks like the perimeter is gonna be 46 inches. So I'll just write that here, P is equal to 46. And these are all inches. You always have to have the same units. These are all inches, you can see. If they don't have the same units, um, some sides might be um, have a larger unit than the other. Do you want to convert larger units to smaller units? Like if you had some in feet, you wanted to, to multiply those by twelve because there's twelve feet in an inch. So if if if, uh, if they were not all the same unit, you would all change them. Like for example, into inches. Okay. So this is fine, they're all the same units here. Okay, and next we're gonna find the perimeter of a square. And with a square, they didn't have to put that many fives. They could have just, I mean, threes, they could have just put one three here. They didn't really need this because a square means all the sides are the same. And this is a, a rectangle, is a, this is a showing that it's a 90 degree uh, right angle and you want the formula for the perimeter of a square so we have a square right here and then see this formula p is equal to 4s p is equal to 4s 4 times s and s stands for the side each side is three feet long okay so four times three is 12 feet, okay. okay. All right, so next we're gonna look at page eight. And here you wanna find the perimeter of a parallelogram. Okay, so I look at my formulas. Here are my parallelograms. There's a figure and see this, P is equal to two times A plus two times B. So A, look how, where A is at on this left side here. And then B is like part of the base. So we will similarly label that. Here I will put equals to B for your base. Here I will put equal from looking at that picture I would put A. Okay, and then I'm gonna write in the formula. So the perimeter for a parallelogram was two times A plus two times B. So I'm gonna do my substitutions, two times A, which is 7.5 meters, plus two times B, which is 14.4 meters. So I'm doing my substitutions. Okay, and then now I'm gonna show my calculation. So I'm gonna show 7.5 times two. So the number with the most digits goes on top. This has two digits, this has one. So the number with the most digits goes on top. And you start multiplying. Five times two is 10. Write down the zero, carry the one. Seven times two is 14, plus one is 15. Okay, and you have one decimal move right here. So that means you're gonna move this you know, start at the end, you're gonna move this to the left one time. And that means you just have 15 units because 15.0 is 15 units. 
and it's going to be meters. Okay, then you're going to show your work for the 14.4 times 2. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 2 is 8. 1 times 2 is 2. And this one has one place value. Place value to do one move, one move over. And it looks like it's going to be 28.8. And that's meters. Okay, and now I'm going to add those up. So when I add those up, I'm going to have to, um, you know, like line up my decimals, for example. So if I do that here, I have, I'm going to put 15.0 plus 28.8. Point eight. That's what I would need to do if I'm going to line up my decimals. So I'll have to put that zero back in, back in there. Remember we left it off over here, and I lined up my decimals. And I start adding zero and eight, eight and five. So I use my fingers. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Carry the one, two, three, four. And then I count my decimal moves, one, two, one, two. Oh, just a second. Um, yeah, because we're adding, right? Yeah, yeah, we're adding, we're adding. So I just line them up and adding, adding. And then, and then actually we just bring the decimal down. Yeah, because we're not multiplying, we're adding. So I just bring the decimal down. And I have 43.8 meters. Okay. All right. And then for number four, um, I would say that there's not really a formula that we can look at and write down right away to, to, for this. Because if you look at this, it's kind of made up of composite figures. Like you have a a little, you know, like a little rectangle here and then another, you know, rectangle there. So I would say that you don't, you're finding the perimeter distance around the object. You're adding up all the sides. So I would, I would just list them, all your sides um, uh, clock, clockwise, and you don't want to miss any. So 3.7 yards. point eight, 18.9, 16.9, 22.6, 22.7. Did you just go around and add, make sure you're not missing any. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now I have decimals all lined up. Okay, so then now what we should do is you should, you know, pause the video at this point, pause the video, and then um, add everything up and then, and then we'll check. So go ahead and do that. And while you're doing that, I'm going to grab my little marker top that fell so that Put that back on my marker. So go ahead and add those up and then we'll check check on that. So what, what you should have gotten is when you added this um, first column of numbers, you should have gotten um, 46. So you would write down 
the six and carry the four. You did that correctly. And then when you're adding decimals, you line up your decimals and so you just pull down your decimal. And then when you add the second column numbers, including that, that extra four that carried four over, you should have gotten 30. So you write down the zero and then you carry the three. And then, and then when you add this last um, column there of digits, of digits and numbers, you should be getting nine. And then I'm gonna put here perimeter equals, just like we did in the other problem. And then this is all in yards. Okay, and that would that would be our answer for that. The, well, the, for finding the perimeter, right? Yeah. Now, I'm gonna also ask this question. I'm gonna read it first and then I'll write it down. What's the cost of putting trim around this figure if it costs six dollars and fifty cents per yard. Okay, let me write that down. Okay, so I'm asking this question because, you know, on your final exam, you have a problem similar to this on your final exam, but it's two parts that first you'll have to do some type of a perimeter calculation, and then you'll have to figure some type of a cause. And so that's why I'm, I'm doing this to kind of help you and get ready to take the final, you'll remember that. And, um, and this first operation, for part one is to find the perimeters you add. But the second operation, when you're trying to find the cost and you know that the trim is $6.50 per yard is, is cost for multiplication. So we're basically gonna be multiplying the 90.6 with the $6.50. But I can save a little bit of work. $6.50 is the same as equivalent to 6.5. Okay, this is a zero we can actually leave off here. And so when I set this up, um, I'm going to put the 90.6 at the top times uh, 6.5. So notice how I'm not using 6.50, and that's okay. Now I cannot leave this zero off. This zero is in between those two numbers. So we don't, we don't, we cannot leave that, that zero off but we can leave this zero off over here, okay, it's at the end. And, um, and, and, and so a money, a money rounds to nearest hundreds, nearest cent. So I can also tell you in vocabulary, um, you know, you have the ones place value, and then you have tens, and then you have hundreds. Once we get a hundred pennies, right? And so this is this is the hundreds place, okay? But we're going to work with six point five, and that's that's okay. We can do that, okay? So when I start multiplying, six times five is thirty. Carry the three. Five times zero is zero plus three, and five times nine is forty-five, okay? And then I like to cross these out once I use them like this so that I don't overuse that or to cross that out. And then I start here. I need this is important. I either need to put a zero here or an empty space, or I like to write X's here. Um, but when you start multiplying six times six, which is 36, you're going to write your six down here. And then you're going to carry that three over over that, over that zero. So six times six is 36, carry the three. And then the order six times zero, any number times zero is zero plus three. 
and then nine times six, which is which is um, fifty four. Okay, so then when we add everything up, this is zero, nine, eight, and then another eight. Four and four is eight, and then five. Okay, and if I count my decimal moves, two in zeros. So it looks like we have a total of um, $588.90. That's going to be the cost of the trim. Oh, and the other thing I was going to mention is that, remember, just for vocabulary, when we're adding up all these terms, these are called add-ins. Same, we're adding up all these terms. But over here, we're multiplying these numbers. We're multiplying these numbers. These are, these are called factors. OK. And then there's one more page I'm going to show you. Oh, there's some vocabulary. Let's see. Let me put that page up. Let's go back to page four. So I have a I have an answer key. So that's why some of these things are written in. Um, so um, I usually sometimes wipe that out, but that's fine. Um, just I'll leave them there, and and we're gonna work out number one and number two. And it says, uh, true or false, determine whether each statement is true or false. If the statement is false, then explain how it can be changed so, the, so that the statement will, will be true. Uh, there are many more than um, one acceptable change. Okay. So if you look at one, it says every square is a rectangle every square is a rectangle okay and i'm going to say that that one is true only by its def definition true by definition so the definition says this that a square is a rectangle in which all four sides are the same length. Yeah, and so that's why we say, yeah, every square is a rectangle because it's it's in our definition. Square is a rectangle in which all four sides are the same length. Okay, excuse me. If you look at number 1B, it says every rectangle is a square. So for that one, we're going to say false. And we're going to say this is, this is because um, not all rectangles have four equal sides. This is false because not all rectangles have four equal sides. Okay. 
and I drew uh, I drew a rectangle that um, on the side whose um, length was like nine inches. And then who's like um, width was three inches long. And so you can see, so here I should put two tick marks here. So this is nine inches and then this three inches. Okay, so, and then there's your little, that's a little right angle. That's a, in the corner here, that's a 90 degree right angle yeah so so again one b that they're saying every rectangle is a square and they're saying that's false and this is false because not all rectangles this is a rectangle and it doesn't have four equal sides to be a square you've got to have four equal sides and that doesn't have four equal sides with the nine and the three okay and then if you look at the next problem, number two, it says every parallelogram is a rectangle. Okay, and we're going to say um, false because we can think of an example. This is false. This is because not all. Not all parallelograms. So this is false. This is because um, not all parallelograms have right angles. And so I can draw a uh, draw a figure where it's kind of like you know like slanted you know right right angle means you know it's got a corner right angle so i can draw it kind of slanted see where it's not it's not a right angle and i can probably draw a better one Let's see kind of something like that maybe but that it's it's not it doesn't have right it doesn't have right angles these are not right angles okay okay all right and if you look at the last one for the section 2b it says to be okay i'm thinking of our lesson right from shakespeare to be or not to be right that is that is a question so for number 2B, it says every rectangle is a parallelogram. And we're going to say that is true. Because a parallelogram is a four-sided figure with opposite sides parallel to each other. That's what a parallelogram is. So parallelogram is a four-sided figure with opposite sides parallel to each other. So every rectangle that you have, will, um, every rectangle is a every rectangle is a parallelogram that's considered that's considered true. Okay, and I can draw a couple of figures um, I have here, like a rectangle drawn right here. And let's say that this is side four inches and then I just I just uh, named the top it looks like I named it as you see looks like I put um, 12 inches there but you see that that's a rectangle and that would be a parallelogram these sides are parallel to each other these sides are like railroad tracks parallel to each other. Okay. 
and every rectangle is a parallelogram. Okay, then I can also draw a square because remember it's from number one or A, remember a square is a rectangle. So I draw this and name it something. And, um, I'm gonna just, actually I just need to put one tick mark. Let's put five inches, five inches. Okay. And then and then we're done. We're done with that. Okay. So um work on your, your homeworks, work on your homeworks and your sections, okay? Work on your homework and your sections. All right. Thank you. Bye -bye.